Before we get to the content, do me a favor and leave a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to support our content. Of course, this is probably going to be our fourth video of the day. And real quick, this is hilarious because I didn't even notice this until my man Nuno Barrows said something in our last video. We're doing a giveaway for NBA 2K22 on any console when it drops. I'm just used to naturally saying NBA 2K21, so in my last video I said NBA 2K21, but no. I'm giving away five copies of NBA 2K22 on any console of your choice. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram or Twitter, either one, and that's it. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? The Los Angeles Lakers had a huge obstacle that they needed to overcome in this free agency. You see, they were fully capped out as a result of paying Russell Westbrook the Supermax as a result of the trade that brought in Russell Westbrook. In addition to that, they're paying LeBron James and Anthony Davis huge salaries. And the only other player that they really had on their roster besides Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Russell Westbrook was Alfonso McKinney. And that's because because, well, he was a non-guaranteed contract. So the Lakers essentially needed to fill up 11 roster spots with zero salary cap space. And man, I think they might be onto something here because there are some players that were rumored to be willing to play for them on the veteran minimum, but it's going to take a very special and unique group of players in order to make sure that the Lakers could have as good great of a championship window as humanly possible. So the Lakers really got off to a strong start because they officially brought back three players, all that at one point or another played for the Los Angeles Lakers. And in one of the player situations, well, played for him recently, and this would be their third stint with the Lakers. So let's take it from the top, shall we? The Los Angeles Lakers signed Wayne Ellington, a 33-year-old six-foot-four shooting guard that is primarily known for his ability for perimeter scoring. He will be signed to a veteran minimum. He played for the Detroit Pistons last year, and he shot 42% from three while attempting six threes per game for a total of 9.6 points per game, which is pretty Pretty fantastic considering that he's coming on for a veteran minimum. The best part of Wayne Ellington is he's not much of a defensive liability at all. As a matter of fact, going back to 2018 to 2019, he was actually plus on defensive box plus minus, and last year he was negative 1.7, but he was playing for the Detroit Pistons. Typically when you play for the worst team in the NBA or the team that ended up winning the number one overall pick in the NBA draft, your DPPM might take a little bit of a hit. Ellington did play for the Los Angeles Lakers during his age 27 season, during the 2014 to 2015 season, when the Los Angeles Lakers were rebuilding. Up next, the Lakers are bringing back a familiar face, someone that I absolutely enjoyed rooting for when he was just 23 years old on the Los Angeles Lakers, and that is Trevor Ariza. He's returning to the Lakers 13 years later. He won a ring with Kobe Bryant after the 2008 to 2009 season and most recently he was playing for the Miami Heat he averaged 28 minutes per game and was able to hit 35 percent of his threes after attempting 4.8 threes per game now when he was in his prime Trevor Ariza had a reputation of being a remarkable three and D player obviously he's not in his prime anymore and when he was on the Miami Heat last year he still had a DPPM of 0.2 I don't really know how many heavy minutes we could expect to give a player going into his age 36 season but nevertheless a remarkable veteran to add onto the bench and finally the Los Angeles Lakers are going to be saying hello to a player that took a one-year hiatus for them 
in Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard did try his hand backing up Joel Embiid during the 2020 to 2021 NBA season, but he just did not have a good season at all. His field goal percentage dipped from 73% during his 2020 season with the Los Angeles Lakers to 59%. He was still averaging about seven points per game and he was still doing his thing on the boards, but just nearly not at an efficient rate. Of course, you could expect Dwight to assume the same role he was assuming before. He was a net negative when he was with the Philadelphia 76ers, and I'm sure he understands what his role is with the Lakers when he is going to return. Obviously, the Lakers did miss Dwight Howard. We did miss having a JaVale McGee or a Dwight Howard type or a lob threat, and having a member of the 2020 NBA championship team, someone that's familiar with what LeBron James and Anthony Davis and Frank Vogel are all trying to do is going to be instrumental to any championship run that the Lakers will be trying to make. Now, some people might be wondering what's to happen of Dennis Schroeder, what's to happen to Andre Drummond. Dennis Schroeder hopefully can have a sign and trade worked for him, and maybe the Lakers could get something in return for him, but Andre Drummond is presumed to be on his way out. Dennis Schroeder is also presumed to be on his way out. Now, at the time that I'm recording this video for you guys, there is also something on the rumor mill that I'm going to be throwing at you guys. And I figured I'd throw this at you guys because I can't make a dedicated video on this rumor because there's just so much going on. But since we're talking Lakers here, both the Los Angeles Lakers and the Brooklyn Nets are both in pursuit of sharp shooting guard Patty Mills. This is according to Mark Stein. Currently, Rudy Gay is very interested in joining the Los Angeles Lakers. He's thought to be leading leaning towards the Lakers. This was the report coming before free agency. And of course, a huge get for the Los Angeles Lakers would also be Carmelo Anthony. But there is a little bit of a downside to all this news. The Los Angeles Lakers are going to probably have the oldest team in the entire NBA. And I really don't know how sustainable this team is going to be, especially in a grueling playoff series. If they were to acquire players like Carmelo Anthony and Rudy Gay, Carmelo Anthony is a player that literally played 24 and a half minutes over this past year. And yeah, he is one year removed from playing 33 minutes per game, but... I don't know how comfortable I would be giving a 37-year-old player 30-plus minutes per game. It's going to be very interesting to see what else the Lakers are going to have to pull off in order to construct this roster to its fullest potential. And we also have some... Uh, sit down, Laker fans. This is going to be a tough one to swallow. The Los Angeles Lakers were not able to retain the services of Alex Caruso as we just got word that Alex Caruso is signing a four-year, $37 million contract with the Chicago Bulls, which is going to be a very tough pill to swallow. I don't know how Michael Jordan feels about Alex Caruso going to Chicago and eventually winning over six championships over there. But jokes aside, I don't think there was any way, shape or form that the Los Angeles Lakers could have retained Alex Caruso. He was due to cash in on a huge payday, probably the biggest payday of his life. And the Lakers are literally in a situation where they can only give out veteran minimums. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to warn you guys, brace yourselves for what might happen to Talon Horton Tucker.